Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I couldn't see the chat. <laughs> now I can see it. Uh, welcome everybody to my PD session today. Um, this is my second PD session within the ELC and today I'm going to present on uh, year one students' perceptions of using TED Talks in EAP 020 lessons to improve their academic vocabulary. Uh, on the first slide you also have my contact details in case you would like us to have a chat about my project um, or about anything else. Is anyone recording the session or should I start recording? Rui Hong? Hello? I think you should record, Christina. Um, got, let me got, see if got. I can see it. I'm not made a co-host. Uh, I don't think I'm a co-host. I think somebody really, said it's so being So I don't it. see that. Yes, okay. somebody's recording it now. Okay. Yes, yeah, somebody's recording it. Okay, thank you. So what I would like to cover today are a couple of things. Oh, the slides are not. Yeah, a couple of things. So I would like to start with a brief overview of the EAP 020 module and the list of TED Talks that was included in the self-study section this semester. Um, then I would like to give you a few details about my action research project and what motivated me in conducting this research project. Uh, hopefully I'll go, I'm going to expand on the survey results and I'm going to uh, conclude with a couple of suggestions and recommendations. And please feel free to ask me any questions at the end of my presentation. So for those of you who are lucky enough not to be teaching on core <laughs> this semester, uh, this is a very large module um, that was also going on in the previous semester, focusing on enhancing students' academic skills. Uh, and it is addressed to year one students studying on a wide range of field of specializations. There are about 4,000 year one students on the module this semester and I think it is uh, forecast that there will be 6,000 students next semester on the first um, on the first part of the module next year. So what I focused on was to um, conduct two focus groups and two surveys with two seminar groups of 27 students each. Um, Basically, I was trying to engage the students that I was teaching on a regular basis and a few of those students were also part of my class in semester one. So, you know, by, by chance, they happen to be in my class still in semester two. Um, I think the module is focusing on developing students listening and vocabulary skills in semester two, especially via the self-study section. But what intrigued me was from the very beginning, or at least in the very first few weeks, uh, when I checked the activity completion reports, which were available on Learning Mall, uh, I could easily notice that the vast majority of students did not complete any of the self-study sections. And um, contrary to my expectations, none of them even touched the TED Talks. So, you know, I started, from, I started from the assumption that the students would be a little bit excited about having uh, TED Talks available for them to watch on a weekly basis. Um, and this was mainly based on the fact that TED Talks are quite popular on EAP modules, including on pre-sessional courses as well. So my assumption was mainly based on my previous teaching experience uh, of teaching pre-sessional courses at the University of Birmingham, Birmingham University and not so much at the University of Southampton. But from my experience, I found that usually uh, undergraduate students and especially Chinese students were quite engaged with uh, TED Talks. So to me, it became a little bit of an issue to what extent the selection of the TED Talks included in the self-study section was based on a random choice or a more informed choice. 
be that either in relation to how many views uh, online those respective TED Talks had, or maybe to what extent they were connected to the topic that was included in the books, in the Skills for Free books. In any case, I think that the tasks that were designed and developed based on the TED Talks were aiming to develop students' academic and topic-specific vocabulary. Most of the tasks um, asked students to match the words within a couple of sentences, so gap fill, basically. And also uh, what I could notice that was that um, the students generally attended the EAP classes on average um, in a number of 70 students, 17 students in each uh, group, which didn't record any kind of major fluctuations throughout the semester. So I was expecting um, that at least halfway through the semester, most of the students would engage with the TED Talks. That didn't actually happen. So on the next slide of this slide, you have a list of TED Talks that was suggested at the very beginning of the semester to be included in the self-study section. Um, some of you might be familiar with some of them. Maybe you could also notice a slight correlation between the topic of the TED Talk and the topic of the um, uh, theme or the topic or the theme included in the book. But that correlation is not always uh, obvious, I would say. So for example, if we look at the topic of survival, I could see that there was an attempt to make the students more engaged by tackling a more current topic, that being of the pandemic. But maybe um, a TED talk like, do personality tests, tests work, are not going to meet our expectations because most of the students, as we can see later, found the vast majority of the TED talks to be quite boring, in fact. So the actual research project was informed by the fact that I'm currently working on PG CERT um, on the 402 module. And I decided to adopt this kind of research because I obviously identified a problem starting with the non-completion of the self-study section by week 10, to be honest. So I first noticed that uh, by week five, when I think Ivana distributed some LMO reports to all EAP 020 teachers. And um, in case you um, would like to have a reminder about what action research involves, the main idea is that it is a self-reflective, systematic, and critical approach to inquiry. It also involves identifying a problematic or more problematic situations. And um, the purpose might be to bring about critically informed changes in practice. Another definition might be that action research is a systematic process of solving educational problems and making improvements based on data collection and data analysis to improve actions to address educational issues. Or uh, another definition, the last one on this slide, focuses on the necessity to inquire the teaching practice and how we can effect positive change in classroom environments, especially based on quality qualitative methods. So starting from this last principle, I decided to focus on conducting two survey projects and a focus group because mainly um, it is qualitative research that informs the teaching in this case. So I decided to focus on two EAP 020 seminar groups um, to start from uh, getting ethical approval, I distributed an information sheet which was quite detailed to all of the students and I gave them the liberty to decide whether they wanted to participate or not. So in other words, I didn't put any pressure on them to feel obliged to participate in the project. Um, they had the freedom to withdraw from the project at any time and without any explanation. I also distributed a consent form which uh, students signed and dated. And about uh, 35 students completed two surveys which were conducted in class. 
and two focus group discussions were taking place in class as well. So the timeline was pretty much as planned. In week nine of the semester two, I sought and obtained ethical approval for the actual research project from ILEAD. In week 10, I started and completed the first survey. And in week 12, I designed the questions for the focus group discussions, followed by conducting two focus groups uh, in the next week, in the following week. And the final survey was conducted in week 14. And to my surprise, the attendance was not that bad, actually, considering that it was the last week of the semester. And my plan is for um, the next few weeks to be focusing on checking the frequency of the use of AWL words that the students revised or learn while watching the TED Talks as used by um, EAP 020 students in their assignments. I still have to figure out how I'm going to do that, but probably it's going to be based on their practice exam uh, because I still have copies of that. So the first survey uh, was completed by 35 respondents out of 53 students in the two seminar groups. All were EAP 020 students in semester two, and they actually completed the EAP 027 module in semester one. In the first semester, they um, had to mainly combine online teaching and face-to-face -face learning, uh, whereas in semester two, the teaching was mainly face-to-face. -face. All participants were aged between 18 and 20 years old. They responded to 30 questions included in the survey, and I decided to keep the same questions in both surveys uh, for me to better compare the results and to see whether my expectations or assumptions would be met or contradicted. What the questions focused on is whether um, to check whether uh, the students were familiar with TED Talks and to what extent they found TED Talks useful in terms of enhancing their academic vocabulary and in developing skills um, necessary for <clears throat> university success. So one of the um, things that I would like to focus on at the very beginning is that the vast majority of students were female, over 50% were female, whereas little below 50% were male. And one of the first questions in the survey was to check whether they have watched a TED Talk online. And to my surprise, over 90% of the students said yes which kind of uh, shaped my expectations that probably they would watch TED Talks more than once a week. Unfortunately, that expectations, wa ex expectations was not met as over 20, uh, sorry, 24 students out of 35 students um, claimed that they watched a TED Talk um, per week. Only about six students watch two TED Talks per week and very few students or, you know, a very um, uh, small margin watch more than three TED Talks per week. And that, to my um, understanding, confirmed the fact that unless they were reminded to watch the TED Talk from the self-study section or unless we watch a TED Talk in the class, they wouldn't do that on their own. And that was confirmed by their responses to the next question, which kind of probed um, their preference for where they would like to watch TED Talks. The vast majority of them um, confirmed that they would prefer to watch TED Talks in EAP lessons. So that might be an explanation why they did not complete the TED Talk tasks um, included in the self-study section. About nine students out of 35 said that they would watch TED Talks at home. Um, about seven students that they would watch uh, TED Talks in other lectures. And some students mentioned other circumstances like uh, in the dormitory or online. Then I, I wanted to check um, students' perceptions on 
the usefulness of TED Talks or to what extent TED Talks can help students improve their skills. And what's listed on the next slide is a top of uh, of students' judgments. So the vast majority of students, over 77%, believe that TED Talks help them improve listening skills. About 60% of students think that TED Talks enhance their presentation skills. Less than half think that TED Talks actually help them improve topic-specific vocabulary. And about 30% believe that TED Talks help them understand the topic studied during the lesson or lecture. And only one student mentioned another factor um, that is helping uh, students to cope with the accent or improve pronunciation. In terms of the perceived effectiveness of watching TED Talks in developing skills to be used at university, over 60% of students scored uh, from a range in a, within a range of from one to five, they scored uh, free in terms of the effectiveness of watching TED Talks. So they found that quite effective, but if we accumulate that with a 23%, I think that um, the overall percentage is quite high because it's over 80%. In terms of how TED Talks can be effective in developing academic vocabulary, which was actually the main focus of my action research project, it kind of met my expectations given that over 50% of the students believe that uh, watching TED Talks would be uh, effective in developing their academic vocabulary. And we'll see that this is a little bit in contradiction with the later result. Uh, and I still have to think a little bit about a possible explanation for that outcome. When I asked how many words, how many academic words they believe that they could learn or revise every time they watched a TED talk, over 50% of the students um, said that they would remember six to 10 words, six to 10 academic words and about 23% of students said that they would remember one to five words. A very small percentage, uh, a little bit over 10%, believe that they would be able to remember more than 15 academic words. And we'll see later that, um, that that kind of high percentage doesn't really match the final outcome or their response to the final question. The main reasons for not remembering or not being able to use academic words uh, learned by watching TED Talks, according to the students, were the fast speed of delivery, as the vast majority of students thought that the speed was too high. This is something that I found a little bit surprising because uh, most TED Talks have the function or the option or tool by which the speed can be adjusted. It can be uh, chosen to be lower or faster, so it can accommodate students' needs. And I actually demonstrated that function during um, at least two EAP lessons. So I was a little bit surprised that most of them still mentioned the fast speed of delivery as one issue that they had to deal with. Another issue that they mentioned was uh, that they usually watch a TED talk only once or too few times. And I think the underlying assumption there is that the only time that they watched the TED talk was actually in class or if they happened to uh, complete one of the self-study section tasks. Another reason for not remembering or not being able to use academic words learned from the TED Talks, uh, according to the students, was the lack of revision or the lack of time to revise the newly learned words. They also tended to pay less attention to the academic words themselves, but rather pay more attention to the overall content. And I think this is uh, usually uh, encouraged by the types of questions um, that are asked about TED Talks, um, checking their comprehension, their overall comprehension. 
Another reason was that students tended not to clearly understand the meaning of the academic uh, words. And that um, issue was, again, a little bit surprising to me because most of the students had access to their phones and they could easily check the meaning of the words uh, by accessing an online English English dictionary on the spot, for instance. I also demonstrated to them how they could use the voice recognition function in Baidu or in Google. Um, so I was a little bit surprised that they were slightly passive uh, while watching the TED Talks and encountering these uh, more sophisticated vocabulary. Um, one reason that I could easily understand was that they tended not to use these academic or new words on a daily basis. So I think that what, I, uh, what they mean by that, uh, they don't use it um, on a regular basis, especially in spoken speech. But I also think that they didn't actually realize that they use these academic words in every single assignment that they had to complete. Um, basically almost every week throughout the second semester of the EAP 020 module. And um, another issue that they mentioned for having difficulty in enhancing the academic vocabulary was that they will need to take notes and memorize academic new words. And this I think hides um, probably a learning culture, um, that being of memorizing and compiling um, academic word lists that they would have to memorize, which I'm not very sure that actually works, right? Because the proof um, would be to what extent they can use it in spoken speech. Um, the vast majority of students, almost 70% of students, agreed that uh, TED Talks is use, are useful in EAP lessons. And over 70% of students um, confirmed that while watching TED Talks, they would enable the English subtitles. And I was glad to know that they knew how to enable that function, right? After I demonstrated that in class as well. Almost half of the students um, used to take notes while watching tech talks. And I'm not sure um, to what extent they were Um, encouraged to do that throughout EAP lessons. So they rarely took notes while watching TED Talks. And I believe the main reason for that is because they could easily enable the subtitles. So they didn't feel the need to take notes based on the TED Talks. And perhaps they couldn't even see the purpose of it. Um, very few students and very rarely or um, rarely did actually compile vocabulary lists while watching TED Talks. Um, but we did have some tasks uh, which were designed as competitions between teams during lessons to see how many words they could actually remember after watching a TED Talk. But I believe that unless that was done in class, they didn't actually do that at home or when they happened to watch another TED Talk in their free time. Um, most of the students preferred not to lower or not to adjust the speed of delivery while watching TED Talks. And I think that's a little bit um, in contradiction with the issue with the fast speed of delivery that they mentioned in their response to one of the first questions. Um, the vast majority of students rarely or very rarely uh, failed to use the transcript in English. And I think they might have been confused about this um, question because actually even if they didn't use the transcript, they actually use the subtitles in most of the times. And from my point of view, it would be interesting to see the results of um, action research project that my one of my colleagues is conducting 
on the use of transcripts in English to enhance students' listening skills and uh, to check whether students see the use of transcripts as very useful in listening classes. So most of the students found using the transcript useful in terms of taking notes of key points or ideas. And this was interesting to me because again, the focus was on the content and not so much on the academic vocabulary or topic specific vocabulary to that, um, for that matter. And they found taking notes of new or of academic words which are difficult to understand and difficult to memorize essential. And finally, one of the reasons for using the transcript in English while watching TED Talks was for them to be able to keep the pace with the fast speed of delivery. And I think this is the major way or the main way in which transcripts are actually used in EAP class. When watching a TED talk, the transcript is made available to the students or um, the subtitles are made available to the students based on the assumption that they might find the speed of delivery quite difficult to handle. Uh, according to the students, the main reasons for watching TED talks would be for them to practice or to improve English skills. So again, um, I think their response was a little bit vague, but we can see that um, as a holistic response probably, because I think they see the overall usefulness of TED Talks as improving a set of skills, not only listening skills or academic vocabulary. Uh, the second in the top was how TED Talks could be used to improve listening skills then to study or understand the topic better. And some of them uh, more specifically mentioned that they could get new ideas from the TED Talks or they could get better knowledge. Um, a few of the students <laughs> mentioned that uh, it would help them to meet one of the EAP 020 requirements. So they were quite um, assessment driven. <laughs> And uh, luckily enough, one of the students mentioned that he preferred to watch TED Talks purely for fun. So I was very pleased to see that, um, you know, they could see the, um, the, the usefulness of doing this beyond assessments and beyond the EAP class. So also related to the survey one results, um, most of the students, most of the students agreed that TED Talks were effective as related to EAP 020 assessments. And I think that their choice was basically based on their belief that TED Talks helped them improve their speaking skills and presentation skills. And that was more evident in the survey two results. Then I wanted to find out the students' favorite TED Talks. And this was another way for me to double check <laughs> which TED Talk tasks included in the self-study section they actually completed. And also to kind of have a, a better view or a better opinion about their preferences in terms of the topic of the TED Talk or um, you know, how they could interact with the material and what kind of intrigued them, what raised their interest and so on. So um, on the top of their list was how to spot a liar, which was actually not a TED Talk included in the list studied this semester. Um, so I think there might be one explanation for this, uh, maybe they mixed up the title because the one that we studied in class, we actually watched in class, was the language of lying in week 10, which is about a five minute uh, video, uh, which most of them found interesting because basically it's about uh, tips of how to spot a liar. So they found that quite intriguing. Another student mentioned, and I, I was quite impressed that um, I think it's a she who remembered the title of the TED Talk, Urbanization and the Future of Cities. And some of the students mentioned all TED Talks were great, hence it is difficult to pick a favorite, which I, I take it, 
I tend to take it not at, at face value, but with a grain of, of salt. I think it was their way uh, of getting around the question. What intrigued me is that out of 35 students, 24 students, which is about 70% of the students did not answer this question or they said that they did not remember the title of the TED talk. And I think that could be a good indication of the fact that either the TED talk was not memorable enough for them or didn't manage to raise their interest or purely because of the fact that they didn't watch um, too many TED talks actually. So uh, another way for me to probe whether they see the usefulness of, EA, of uh, TED Talks for the EAP020 module was to ask them if they would recommend a TED Talk to a friend. And the vast majority of students over 55%, um, over right, almost 60% of the students said they, they would recommend TED Talks to a friend. But I was surprised by the fact that about 22% of the students said they were not sure. And I kind of regret having uh, given, them, given them that option. <laughs> uh, so probably the undecisive ones um, could have picked another answer if they were not offered that option. But probably I can, I can probe that result later on. And the main reasons for recommending TED Talks to a friend seem to be that they believe that TED Talks are useful to learn about academic style, which is a little bit in contradiction with their previous responses to the questions of how uh, useful they see TED Talks in relation to developing certain skills or especially the academic vocabulary. They believe that TED Talks are a good way to learn English, which is consistent with their response or their belief that TED Talks enhance their English language skills. Um, some of the students believe that TED Talks are helpful or useful or interesting. And um, some of the students believe that TED Talks could be used to enhance listening skills. So to me, what was surprising was um, basically their suggestions, which I think were quite informed. And I think we should take them into account because uh, it's based on their experience of TED Talks throughout the semester. And probably they hide more explanations of, what, of why they did not complete the self-study sections. And this, I think, is vital to be considered, especially having in view that next semester um, some changes to the core module will be implemented, especially related to making some of the material um, as part of flipped classes only. So most students suggested uh, on top of their list that uh, TED Talks enhance listening skills. They could be used to enhance listening skills. Another suggestion was for teachers to use TED Talks to teach academic vocabulary during EAP lessons. Um, another purpose for the TED Talks uh, as part of the EAP class was to use them to make a list of useful words at the end of each TED Talks. Uh, they suggested that subtitles in English could be used, which we always did when we did that in class, when we watched TED Talks in class. Um, they also suggested summarizing the content of the TED Talk at the end, um, choosing the TED Talks according to topics which students themselves see as uh, interesting. And I found quite interesting the fact that they suggested that the number of TED Talks watched in EAP classes should be increased and that TED Talks should definitely be incorporated into EAP classes and not in the self-study section. And those two last suggestions were consistent with the findings of the second survey. So I think their opinion didn't change uh, towards the end of the semester um, by any chance or to any degree, in fact. And I was also curious to find out what factors would convince uh, these students to watch TED Talks, considering that um, most of the tasks included in the self-study section based on the TED Talks were 
not completed or completed by very, very few students. I think the percentage was below 10, consistently below 10, not to say, you know, very close to zero. So one factor that would encourage students to watch TED Talks more often would be um, to enable the function that uh, enables the students to adjust the delivery pace or as they say the speaking speed. Um, we can also use TED Talks as a means of improving presentation skills and I think that would take the pressure off the students actually. Probably teachers could explain how TED Talks um, improve listening skills because uh, students obviously see that purpose of TED Talks more, more often. And one of the um, factors which surprised me was the fact that some students see TED Talks as stories which encourage them. So I think that's in line with some of the motivational speeches that actually are included in TED Talks. And the core question to my, uh, in my um, research project was which academic words the student actually learned or revised by watching or while watching or after watching TED Talks. And I included on the slide the image of a typical task based on TED Talks, which was included in the self-study section on LMO. And what I usually did um, with these type of tasks was to motivate students uh, in the sense that they could guess the word based on the collocation or based on grammar. So that was my way to encourage them to complete the self-study <coughs> um, task based on the TED talk within the self-study section. So for example, in, in this TED talk about uh, the language of lying, obviously we can um, guess that in the first gap we need a verb, so the only possible answer would be detect, right? Uh, in the second gap, we need um, a noun. And if they know the collocation, we always say under certain circumstances or under these circumstances, which kind of tells us the correct answer for the last one. Um, and in the last question, which was question 30 in the survey, I asked the students to list any academic words that they learned or revised while watching TED Talks. And this is probably the most surprising result of my uh, action research project, because what I could easily notice was that most of the students failed to um, list academic words which were actually mentioned in the TED Talks with very, very um, rare and minor exceptions. The good news is that um, some of the students did manage to produce academic words or words which are included in the academic word list. And I think most of them tried really hard and at least they included some words which are not that commonly used or which are very topic specific or which are a little bit more sophisticated in, in the way in which they are used. However, I think they also indicate a limitation to the project in the sense that I cannot really 100% double check that their production of these academic words is based on uh, the fact that they watched TED Talks, right? It can be um, as a result of their exposure to academic texts, to the text included in the textbook and so on. And also what was surprising was that um, over 62% of the students said that they do not remember any academic words from the TED Talks or they didn't provide any answer. So the words in purple are the ones that are included in the academic word list and for me to be able to identify that I use the AWL function on the eapfoundation.com website. In the second survey which was taking place four weeks later so uh, in week 14, I wanted to double check whether there would be any improvement in either the number of academic words that uh, students would be able to remember or revise by watching TED Talks after being exposed to at least one TED Talk that was watched during class time. 
And I also wanted to double check the students' familiarity with TED Talks and whether their opinions about how useful TED Talks would be in terms of developing their skills and their academic vocabulary would change. So um, they had to respond to the same questions and the same number of questions. All the participants were aged 18 to 20. All of them were studying on the EAP 020 module in semester two. All of them uh, undertook the EAP 027 module in the previous semester when they um, studied half of the classes online and half of the classes on site. And this time, probably because it was the final week of the semester, only 25 students decided to participate in the survey. So out of, out of 53 students in the two seminar groups that I taught. So if you remember the percentage from the survey one results, which was 91% of students that said that they watched a TED talk online, it was a little bit surprising that the percentage was lower this time, actually and not uh, necessarily higher as expected. Again, uh, the gender distribution was in favor of female participants. So most of the students were female and um, about 30% of the students were male. Out of 25 students, 17 students said that they usually watched one TED talk per week which is consistent with the findings of the first survey because the vast majority of the students in both surveys mentioned that they would watch uh, only one TED talk per week. Again, the vast majority of students, about 17 students out of 25, mentioned that they would prefer to watch TED Talks in EAP lessons. And what changed slightly was the number of students who said that they sometimes watch TED Talks at home. Um, over 60% of students agreed that TED Talks can help them improve their listening skills, their presentation skills, academic vocabulary, uh, and topic-specific vocabulary in that particular order. And very few students uh, believe that TED Talks actually help them understand the topic studied during the lesson or lecture. So to my surprise, um, there was no significant improvement in the number of academic words which the students believe that uh, could be learned or revised every time when watching a TED talk. In fact, uh, less than 50%, slightly less than 50%, said so they, they usually remember one to five words, uh, whereas in the previous survey, the average was around six to 10 words. So that was a little bit <clears throat> unexpected. Um, the main reasons for remembering or being able to use academic words learned by watching TED Talks was were, due, were students' familiarity with the words, the fact that they found TED Talks quite interesting, and the, the fact that the tasks based on the selected TED Talks probed for academic vocabulary. So uh, compared to the results of the first survey, the students were more positive in their response to this question because they were asked if they could or could not remember or they could or could not uh, use academic words learned by watching TED Talks. So I was pleased to see that some of their responses were positive. Um, they explained why they found remembering or not being able to use academic words learned by watching TED Talks um, by giving some details about the lack of revision or the lack of time to revise uh, these words. One of the answers was a little bit too vague for me because some of them mentioned that they found TED Talks too difficult. So I'm not sure whether that's in terms of the speed of delivery or in terms of the sophistication of the language in use or um, for them not to understand the content or you know, to follow the organization of ideas or I'm not sure exactly what they meant by that, but my assumption would be that it's related to the speed and the vocabulary. Um, most students believe that they watch the TED talk too few times, 
they found the pace of delivery too fast. They tended to focus only on the content and not so much on the vocabulary. And they were not sure how to use the newly learned words in context. Um, so also consistent with the first survey, the main reasons for using the transcript in English while watching TED Talks, according to the students, was to remember and review the content. So again, prioritizing the content, not so much the vocabulary, understanding the topic, and uh, in the third place, to remember new or academic words and sentences. And one of the students mentioned that um, it is important to follow the speaker's speed, what other students refer to uh, being able to keep the pace with the fast speed of delivery, which is consistent with the survey one results. So again, consistent with the first results is that most students found, um, found it important to watch TED Talks to improve listening skills, English skills, to learn new ideas, to improve speaking skills and their confidence levels, and finally, only to remember words. So in terms of effectiveness, there is no um, big change in terms of the percentage of students who found TED Talks quite effective, but I think that actually contradicts um, their beliefs based on the suggestions that they made at the end. So in the top three of their favorite TED Talks at the end of the semester was the last one, uh, the one that we watched in week 14. And that was a little bit surprising to me because it's, it is actually quite a long TED Talk, over 19 minutes long. Another surprising result was that um, most of them mentioned um, as their preferred TED Talk, how to make a presentation, which was actually not a TED Talk, but an in-house video. And I think Chi Wei would be very pleased to uh, find out <laughs> that um, most students remembered her video about how not to do a presentation and how to do a presentation. So yeah, kudos to Chi, Chi Wei for her cool style in that video because obviously the students remembered or found that video quite memorable and useful. And finally, they mentioned how to spot a liar. So this is consistent with um, the findings of the first survey. Again, it was a little bit surprising to me that 16 students out of 25 preferred not to answer that question or they said that they did not remember the title of the TED talk. So this is some, these are some images of the um, TED Talks that were preferred by the students, right? Um, the first one, how not to be ignorant about the world, Chi Wei's video, which is actually not a TED Talk, um, how to spot a liar, which was actually not included in the list of TED Talks um, um, that were included in the self-study section, and the one which was mentioned in both surveys, uh, which was the language of lying. So I will um, end by drawing your attention to some of the suggestions that students made in relation to using TED Talks in EAP lessons. They suggested that um, they could be used mainly by reducing or adjusting the speed of delivery. They also would like to see more games based on the selected TED Talks, um, which would be played in the EAP class. They would find it useful to review the content and the useful words at the end of each TED Talk. They would prefer to spend more time on note-taking, particularly of new words. Um, they definitely would like to see more use of the English subtitles while watching the TED Talks. And one suggestion that I quite I found quite pertinent was for EAP teachers to choose current or hot topics and to increase the number of TED Talks that are watched in EAP classes. Um, so consistent with the results of the first survey, the, most students were not able to remember or to answer um, the question related to academic words learned or revised while, by, or after watching TED Talks. Again, the words in purple are 
words which are actually included in the academic word list. But you can also easily see that some of them are actually topic specific and not necessarily um, considered academic words. The focus group results were a little bit surprising to me again because most of the students were reluctant to express their opinions during the focus groups especially at the beginning and they contradicted the results of the survey in the sense that most students did not feel that TED talks were helpful or useful or effective in developing skills uh, or the academic vocabulary and most students only sometimes use the transcript in English while watching TED Talks. Um, finally, I would like to um, end with some recommendations. So based on the students' suggestions, I believe that what could be changed in uh, the way in which TED Talks are used in EAP modules is to first incorporate watching TED Talks in the EAP class and only then gradually include them as flipped classroom materials or self-study section materials. Secondly, I would suggest that um, it would be best to allow year one students to decide upon the selected topics or titles of the TED Talks based on their own search online or based on the number of views online or based on their preferred topics, um, on their own interests in, in a particular topic. Um, then I would recommend that uh, choosing the selected TED Talks based on their relevance to the topic to be studied could be avoided. Maybe uh, we could choose more popular TED Talks um, based on their online views. I firmly believe that year one students could be definitely be engaged in designing some of the tasks based on TED Talks by using English subtitles or by making the transcript in English available to them. As EAP teachers, we could easily demonstrate to year one students how the speed of delivery could be adjusted since most of them found that as an issue. Uh, we could easily monitor students' engagement with TED Talks, especially in the first four or five weeks, and then uh, possibly implement the changes suggested by students in their feedback. We could also demonstrate to students how TED Talks are included in COCA captions. I don't know if you have used this function of COCA, but there is a new function in the, um, uh, in the database where the students can watch a very short video in which uh, the use of a certain word is demonstrated, usually by how it is used in a TED Talk speech. And um, finally, I would suggest that um, we could check activity completion percentages and make them available to students. My students were not impressed at all uh, by being shown these activity completion percentages, but maybe it would have a different impact if they were exposed to these percentages on a weekly basis and encouraged to monitor their progress and possibly make these percentages part of the assessment. And finally, um, I would suggest that students could be engaged more often in reflection tasks on TED Talks so we can better select um, uh, the use of TED Talks and the purpose uh, or how they are used in EAP class. So I would be happy to answer any questions. I believe that we are two minutes over time, <laughs> but I would be very happy to answer any questions that you might have. Hello. Um, I don't have any questions as such, but um, I did enjoy the talk and Thank you um, very much, like I the do. last talk, um, you know, it did send me away with some practical ideas. Mm. Um, I did try out some of the ideas that you gave in your last talk. So, uh, and so I think that will, I will also be thinking about this with the TED talks. Um, Thank you, you very that, much, Nigel. You mentioned, though, um, that Chi Ways, you said it wasn't really a TED talk. Yeah. When you say a TED talk, do you mean talks that are produced by TED? Yes. Or could it include? No, so it, would, it wouldn't yes. include other YouTube. 
No, but, but I think I think that's actually a good sign. Even though they thought that they it was a TED talk, I think they um, their response is kind of indicate that maybe we could use this kind of instructional videos more often, especially on the EAP core module, because students seem to be more engaged with these type of. Um, of videos and I think they also liked um, Chi Wei's delivery style. I think that's what what made it um, memorable to them. Yeah. Okay, so Nigel, you say if you devise some games to follow TED Talks, you'd be selling them, yes? Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know what the students had in, had in mind there. I don't know. <laughs> I, you, you'd, need, you'd certainly need somebody with a lot of imagination to come up with a talk to follow, sorry, a game to follow a TED talk. Yeah, so Samantha says that she doesn't think that there is a lot of academic words in TED talks. And actually what I wanted to say from the very beginning was that um, what partly inspired my action research project was the um, fact that I read an article according to which uh, TED Talks don't actually enhance students' academic vocabulary, and I wanted to probe that. And it was one of the few articles which claimed that, because most of them um, do argue that uh, TED Talks enhance students' listening skills, presentation skills, and vocabulary, right? So, yeah. Yeah, why incompetent people think they are amazing? Yes, that's available on LMO. Any more questions? Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you for your very positive comment. Yes, and I believe that, um, yeah, we could possibly look into other type of uh, YouTube content that the students might find more engaging as well. Yeah, thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Kristen. Okay, so in case you would like us to have a chat or in case you come up with any other questions, please feel free to contact me. You have my email address on the first slide. And yeah, I'll see you around. Thank you very much, Ling. Thank you, Bo. I've never presented that much data <laughs> in an hour. <laughs> Thank you very much for, to everyone for attending this session. And I look forward to any questions that you might have or advice about 402. <laughs> Okay, so if you don't have any questions, I will end the session.